The Rock appeared on Monday's Raw and has revealed where he wants to sit. After laying out Jinder Mahal with a rock bottom and people's elbow, he told the crowd in San Diego that he was hungry and was going to eat. He asked where he should sit in a booth, at the bar, or at the head of the table, alluding to Roman Reigns. The crowd reacted strongly as The Rock ended the segment. Last week, Fightful had a report of a former WWE champion appearing on the first Raw of 2024. Triple H wrote on X that he couldn't confirm or deny the rumors when it came time to introduce the former WWE champion. Jinder Mahal came out and ran down the crowd, taking shots at America. That was when The Rock came in, eventually getting the fans to chant, Day One Douchebag at Jinder. Back in 2022 and 2023, there had been reports of a possible Rock Roman Reigns match at WrestleMania 39 in Los Angeles, which ultimately didn't take place. Last September, The Rock spoke to Pat McAfee on why the match didn't happen, saying that they got really, really close but couldn't actually nail what that thing was, so that they put their pencils down and that they all agreed that it could eventually happen at WrestleMania in Philadelphia. Saying, The fans deserve something just incredible and unprecedented. And not only that, but I also want to deliver to the locker room and the boys and the girls back there who are working their asses off. The Rock last competed in a six-second match at WrestleMania 32, defeating Eric Rowan. In an Instagram post on Tuesday night, The Rock reflected on his surprise WWE return, writing, It all hits differently. The theme, the crowd, the connection, the reaction, the electricity, the chills, the mana. Hell of a way to bring in 2024. Grateful, blessed, and inspired to forever be the people's champ. He also added the following line at the end of his post, we're just getting started. Roman Reigns responded to The Rock's appearance on Monday by tweeting a crying laughing emoji. WWE hasn't indicated where a potential Roman Rock match would be taking place. Roman Reigns will be appearing on this Friday's New Year's Revolution episode of SmackDown. WWE has confirmed that the undisputed WWE Universal Champion will appear on SmackDown this Friday night. The lineup for the episode includes a triple threat match to determine Roman Reigns' next challenger. Either Randy Orton, LA Knight, or AJ Styles will challenge Roman for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship at Royal Rumble. Naomi could be headed back to WWE. Fightful is reporting that sources within both WWE and Impact Wrestling expect her to return to the company, with some saying it could happen sooner rather than later. One source noted there would have to be a major development for her not to be back in WWE soon. As Trinity, she is the current Knockouts Champion in Impact Wrestling and is scheduled to defend her title against Jordan Grace at TNA Hard to Kill on Saturday, January 13th. Trinity debuted with the promotion in April and won the Knockouts title from Deanna Perrazzo at Slammiversary in July. Naomi has been gone from WWE since walking out of the May 16th, 2022 episode of Raw along with her then-tag team partner Mercedes Monet formerly known as Sasha Banks. Monet was also in talks with WWE for a return, but the two sides were too far apart on money. She is now expected to debut somewhere other than WWE imminently. I had spoken to Trinity when she first arrived to Impact Wrestling, now TNA Wrestling, and here's what she had to say about why she signed with the promotion and what that time away from WWE was like for her. Take a look. Why Impact? What made you say, hey, this is it. This is the place I want to be. This is the place where I want to spend X amount of time. The women's division, I think they have one of the best women's division. Right now, they've always told great stories with their women's division and just having the conversation that I had with Gail that really sealed the deal for me. You weren't even sure if you were going to come back to pro wrestling. Right. And now here we are talking about being in main event matches, getting more time, having a championship belt around your waist. When you think about where you've come from point A to point B, do you feel like this is the version that you've had in your mind of who you wanted to be? Oh, absolutely. And I still think I'm growing and evolving. And I don't think this is the last evolution of me that we'll see. And I think that time away and that time off really helped 
helped me to navigate and figure out what I really wanted and what I needed to do for myself and just as a performer and the impact I wanted to have on women's wrestling. I was able to like really think about all those things and process it all and really miss it. I just think I got to a point where I became so burnt out mentally, physically, emotionally, everything. And I thought that was it, but having that time away really helped me to just see clearly that I wasn't done and there's more of me to give. During that time period that you were away from wrestling and you were doing all of these really great things, but only you know what you personally went through during that time away from pro wrestling. What was that like for you? And what did you learn about yourself during that time period? Initially, it was tough. It was really tough. Just feeling like my whole world, everything, it all kind of just being cut off. That was tough. But having the time to step away from everything really asked myself, what do I want in this next season of my life? What, what have I been missing? What led me or what made me feel this way? What is it going to take for me to feel better, be in a happier place, and also to feel fulfilled? Not just make money, not just be on TV, not just have this the fame and all of that, but like really be fulfilled. Because to me, if you're not happy doing all these things, that doesn't work for me. Additionally, WWE's Chief Content Officer, Paul Triple H Levesque, will have a major announcement on the WWE preview special 2024 airing this Thursday on The Peacock as part of WWE's New Year's Knockout Week programming. Andrade El Idolo is thankful for the time he spent in AEW. After finishing up with the company at World's End, Andrade issued a statement on Tuesday thanking AEW and Tony Khan for the two and a half years that he spent in the promotion. Andrade also acknowledged all of the talent in AEW, everyone working behind the scenes, and the fans. Andrade wrote that he wishes AEW the best going forward. His final AEW match was a loss to Miro at World's End this past Saturday. CJ Perry turned against Andrade at the conclusion of the match. Following World's End, Tony Khan confirmed that Andrade's AEW contract was expiring at the end of 2023. Tony Khan said he has a ton of respect for Andrade and wanted to keep him in AEW, but they weren't able to reach an agreement. It's expected that Andrade will be returning to WWE, where he was previously employed from 2015 through 2021. MJF could be out of action for a long time. The former AEW World Champion announced in November that he was dealing with a torn labrum, but would still defend his title against Samoa Joe at World's End. Our own Dave Meltzer gave an update on MJF's condition on the Wrestling Observer Radio, noting that the 27-year-old is still deciding whether to have surgery or rehab the injury. MJF went into his match against Jay White at full gear with his shoulder already injured. However, it was further aggravated by a top rope, Uranagi, during the bout. MJF also injured his hip after delivering a top rope elbow drop to the outside of the ring. Meltzer addressed these injuries in the November 27th edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, saying MJF legit suffered a dislocated hip during the match as well as aggravated a prior shoulder injury. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you.